Good eye, mites. It's your boy here, and we are back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And logged in today, and we have some very, very exciting news. Brand new update notification is here, of course, because it is the first day of the month of November. This is typically when they like to drop these update notices at the very start of the month. And okay, I didn't even scroll there, it just automatically scrolled us all the way down to the next set of remixes let's just start from the top here okay actually this is the very first thing they're going to talk about so that is exactly what we want so first and foremost we're getting two remixes for a legendary and mythic hero in the next update and those are going to be for elliewood and also for yune so when it comes to elliewood i mean you compare this guy to all the other legendary heroes that have gotten remixes at this point and I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Elliewood is the only one that has still remained relevant in the meta all this time. He's a really good unit in summoner duels for the main reason that he's just able to grant bonus doubler to your highest attack ally from any range. It doesn't matter where he is on the map. He just does it at the start of the turn. And why this is so good is because you're not even wasting an action to do it. So in the example of, I guess, Astrid would be one. She has to go ahead and waste her action and use a rally on the ally you want to get bonus doubler before it's going to kick in. And also, Astrid may not even be in reach of the unit that you want to grant bonus doubler to. So, this guy with his unlimited range and also just passive ability to just give bonus doubler to your highest attack ally is very strong. And I'm very curious to see what they're going to do for him. Now, I feel like he's one of those units that just wants to play a full support role, so let's hope they don't go too crazy with giving him offensive stuff. So his remix skill is going to be Flow Refresh 3, which is very good. I think he defaulted with Chill Attack, which is bullshit. I mean, that, that's basically a Grand Hero Battle level skill. We want something better, and Flow Refresh is certainly a lot better. It gives him half a null follow-up and 10 HP healing after combat. So we'll certainly take that. Okay, so Vision of Arcadia. Let's see what they're going to do for this. Okay, so at the start of turn, if a dragon or beast ally is deployed, grants attack, speed, and defense. It's now granting speed before it was only attack and defense. Plus six. Null panic and canto. What? Okay, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now he's doing canto, null panic, and bonus doubler? Okay, that's pretty wild. So, Kanto 1 to the unit and ally with the highest attack, excluding unit for one turn. This is so powerful. Oh my god, dude. I was not expecting him to give Kanto. I thought maybe they'd do Null Panic because it synergizes really well, of course, with Bonus Doubler. While you have that active, you don't want to be hurt by Panic. So, Null Panic is perfect in con combination with Bonus Doubler. But the fact that they're giving him Kanto 1 support as well, that's just out of... That's out of control, bro. That's that's a little bit much. So, I don't even need to see what his weapon does. He's just massively better already. They went all in with the support. And he is... He's giving speed now. That's another clutch thing. He wasn't giving speed earlier to this. He was only giving attack and defense. And, of course, speed is one of those stats that you want to stack when you're using a super stat ball unit with bonus doubler in tow. So, that's just crazy. Th this guy is going to be a monster now. As if he wasn't already. So, next up we have Yune. Let's see what they gave to her. Alright, her new A skill is going to be Attack and Res Unity. I actually can't remember what her default A skill was. It's been quite a while. It might have just been like Attack and Res Bond 3 or something. It, it was definitely not something particularly good. Because I, I believe I was running... Death Blow 3 on her for fodder, and obviously Death Blow is nowhere even close to Attack and Res Unity, so that's certainly much better for her. Okay, so Chaos Name Plus at the start of the turn, if any foes have the highest attack speed, defense, or res on the enemy team, inflicts minus 7 on the corresponding stat of those foes and foes within two spaces of those foes through their next actions. Also, at the start of the turn, if any foes have the highest attack speed defensive res on the enemy team, inflicts panic on those foes. Okay, so 
they buffed this quite a bit. Actually, hold on. We can go ahead and take a look at Yune. I believe it was only three rows centered on her. Now they just made it unlimited range on the foes with the highest corresponding stats. Let me see where Yune is so we can just take a quick look at her. Okay, so Chaos Named, what it did before was at the start of turn, if foes within three columns, yeah, like I thought, centered on unit, have res less than or equal to units res minus three. So not only was it restricted to columns, but they also had to lose a res check against her, which isn't necessarily the worst thing because her res is pretty high. So after all of that is said and done, then they only take a minus five to the highest of their attack speed, defense, or res after this is going to calculate in. And then when calculating for attack, it also does minus 15 to attack, which is supposed to compensate for the enemy having a weapon equipped. So is that any good? It's certainly significantly better now. You could just have her standing there menacingly on your defense team or even possibly in eighth raids or i mean in um summoner duels now and just have her passively debuffing the enemies by minus seven to whatever their highest stat may be so it's like she's got an unlimited super chill effect there which is pretty good and also it's going to affect the allies that are within two spaces of the foes that you're targeting so <laughs> yeah it's just the gift that keeps on giving she's going to really hinder the opponent's team now and also inflicts panic too so i think this is this is really good this, this is something that she needed this is going to be very helpful on defense which she is a defense mythic it's going to be really helpful if you just want to run a passive debuffer on your team maybe in eighth raids or in summoner duels or wherever you may want to run her so that's all really good hopefully her weapon is going to live up to this but <laughs> It's going to be really hard to top this guy. I don't think there's going to be a better remix than this for a long time. Just the fact that they, they gave Elliewood Kanto, that's so crazy. It doesn't even matter. Like, his weapon could just be a dud. He's already a god. Okay, so what else do we have in here? Okay, so we're getting new Memento events. Of course, they keep on updating that mode, the, the one with all of the little cutscenes. All right, here are going to be our brand new ephemera codes. So we have Iwan and we have the Ninja Navar. Ninja Navar is pretty cool because he has Ninja Yari. He's the only source of that, and the Ninja Lance is a pretty good inheritable weapon. It's also pretty good on Fallen Dimitri, so if you wanted to just pass that along to him, you're going to be able to do it. Oh, actually, is he the one... Is his Ninja Lance better than the Ninja Korin's one? I can't remember actually if was navar's lance better than ninja corin's oh man I, i'd have to double check that i can't remember but either way the brave attacking lances are very good especially on fallen dimitri now that we have also access to the null follow-up seal so that's really good okay we have the god of tier lists himself we have laszlo as a combat manual we have Ferdinand von Eyer, we got Camilla, we have the Bride Lalum, and then we have Colm. So, Bride Lalum is going to be our Tempest Trial prize ephemera code this time around. I, I don't really recommend building her. Just having one copy of her is enough because she's one of the only two dancers that we have from Fire Emblem 6. So, she can help you out in limited battle modes where you can only use characters from that title. But as far as merging her up, I would say just don't bother. Okay, so here are going to be the next batch of units that are getting refined, and we see here a very, very surprising unit. It's Duo Hector, the very first Duo Hero ever released into the game. He is going to be on the next batch of refines, and the sky is the limit with what they could do with him. Are they going to touch his Duo skill? Are they going to buff it to make it stronger? I think it's about time that they do, because... His duo skill could be really impactful in summoner duels and all the other modes. Basically, what it does right now is foes centered on three columns around him are going to take 20 chip damage at the start of the turn, or rather at the turn that you activate his duo skill. And it's a one-time use only thing. It's not reusable, unfortunately. But as we've seen from Sinmara Man, just 20 free damage is 20 free damage. That's a really powerful effect to do, especially in the meta that we have now where all these 
opponents just have so much defense and it's really hard to chip them down and whittle them away on health if they can survive a round of combat. A lot of them have Miracle now as well, so just being able to deal 20 free damage to foes and then clobber them on your next attack is going to be a really, really beneficial thing. So I'm hoping that what they do to buff his duo skill, I think they need to do three columns and three rows centered on him. Because only three columns can really get messed up if you're on a bad map. Like if you spawn on a map and the opponents are on the left hand side and you're on the right hand side. You're not really going to be able to reap any significant value out of his duo skill. It's mostly when your units are positioned on the bottom and the enemies are on the top that you're able to even get anything out of it. So three rows and three columns centered on him I think is the first step they need to do with that duo skill. And as far as his weapon goes, I believe he gets all stats of 5, he has effective against armor, and then he may get a guaranteed follow-up. I actually don't remember, I'd have to double check him. But his weapon as it stands right now isn't necessarily the worst, but it's also not the greatest, comparative to some of the other weapons we have in the game. But it's very exciting to see our very first duo hero getting a refine, and... I just hope that they also buff his duo skill in the process and not just go for the weapon and that's it. Okay, also in this batch, we're getting the fallen female Corrin. We're getting Cynthia, the Pegapony princess. We're getting also Python. Oh, Python's a pretty rad choice there. Python was one of those really good merge projects back in the day because he's just a cavalry ranged unit, which is always good to build. He's got five reach and reach is the most powerful thing in this game. So, hopefully they give him something good. I know a lot of people built him up because he's just, like I said, a cavalry range unit. He's always going to be useful. And then we have Petra as well. Petra is unfortunately not really useful for anything right now. She used to be useful as ground orders fodder, but <laughs> that's not really in vogue anymore. After we got Bride Catria, there's just no reason to run any order skills anymore. So, her weapon has effective against beasts, which is pretty clutch. Hopefully they give her some more offensive stuff and make her a better player phase option. But certainly, we've got some good stuff on the horizon here with Hector and Elliewood. Both are very potentially insane units depending on what they decide to do. Elliewood, like I said already, he's a shoo in to be an amazing god right now. And for Hector, they don't really need to do much. They just need to tweak him a little bit. And I think he's going to be hanging in there. Okay, Summoner Duels is being updated. We're going to be able to increase favor to 2,500 now. I don't even know when I'm going to get around to that. I still only have favor level 1,000 because <laughs> as if I have time to play Summoner Duels. This will be in effect on November 15th. Aether Raids is being updated, so we're getting the Healing Tower leveled up to level 10, which is nice. I actually do like using the Healing Tower both on offense and defense. I think it's one of those few structures that has pretty solid usability on both offense and defense. Aether Resorts is being upgraded, so we're getting new songs in the concert hall. Ships and Homes from Blazing Blade and Preparations Reunion from Shadows of Valentia. So more music, I I'm not too sure off the top of my head which ones those are, but I'm sure they're pretty solid. And then for our next batch of Heroic Grail units, we're going to be getting Mordecai and Holst, both of which I think are very strong merge projects to get to plus 10. They score in the next level bin, so they're going to be able to help you out in arena mode and any other mode that requires you to score high in. Both of them have perf weapons as well, so they have a little bit of an edge over non-perf units that may want to merge up, such as Atlas, for example. So both of them, I, I'm not sure who I'm going to go for first, but I do intend to plus 10 both of them at some point. So that's very good. Other changes, we're going to add filters to the skill search function on equip seals screen. Oh, you can now search for seals. That's going to be pretty nice. Yeah, it is <laughs> a little annoying trying to find the correct seal at the moment because you got to meander about a little bit and see where it is. But it's not always available to find that easily. They're also revising some animation for Lloyd, <laughs> White Wolf Sprite. You know what we need for Lloyd? We don't need animation fixes. We need an artwork fix for that guy. Can we please get a Resplendent Lloyd? Make him the first Grand Hero Battle character to get a Resplendent alt. And also just make his artwork better, please. The dude looks like he's cracked out on heroin. Can we just get him out of the crack house and get him looking right? 
All right, we will also fix the following issues with the animations in Hero's Journey. Oh, I didn't even realize there was an issue with that. There are times when unnecessary graphics are displayed, when you have Sharena's Spring Princess in your team, and you peer into the world mirror and a long period of time passes. <laughs> okay, I don't know how they even found that out. That's a pretty niche thing to find, but okay. And a very small portion of Hero Sprite's heads became smaller in the three-star Life and Limb and four-star More Hidden Dangers Memento events. Okay, so just a little cosmetic fixes there. Also, we're revol resolving an issue that prevents Legendary Tiki and Fallen Tiki from equipping the gold Divine Tiara accessory. Actually, I kind of thought that made sense because they already wear a tiara anyway. Well, I, I guess now you're going to be able to give them another accessory, so sure. And that's pretty much all there is to cover in this update. So very, very exciting. We have our current meta level unit. This is like when we got the Brave 4 refines and Brave Edelgard, who's already still a meta unit, just ended up getting a buff. So this guy getting a buff is certainly going to be annoying, if anything. In Summoner Duels, he's just one of the top threats to deal with. Not even because of himself, but the allies that he's buffing. Yude is pretty interesting. I do like the buff they gave to Chaos Named. We just need her weapon to be good as well so that she can be a strong defensive mythic again. And then, of course, Duo Hector. What's going to happen with his duo skill? Is that going to get buffed or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And this is your boy Tacho signing out. So take care, fellas. And I'll catch y'all again on the flip side.